Welcome back. Up until now, we have been working mostly in kind of one-dimensional or two-dimensional figures and working with lines and that kind of thing. We're going to extend our studies now to three-dimensional figures and we're going to start working in uh, different planes. So to review planes, a plane is a two-dimensional figure with infinite length and width, and a plane has no thickness. Imagine a piece of paper with infinite length and width. And a plane is named for our purposes by placing a single lowercase letter in one of the corners of the plane. So on the screen here, you can see an example of a plane, and we might call this plane M. And you'll see something like that. Coplanar, for definition, points, lines, segments, and so forth that lie on the same plane are considered coplanar. And of course, non-coplanar are those same items, points, lines, segments, that do not lie on the same plane. So let's come down here and take a look at uh, what something might look like. Okay. So we would say points, so we've got plane M here, and we would say things like uh, points V and T and B and S and A are all coplanar. They all lie in plane M. Whereas R and P, well, they don't lie in plane M. So we might say things that are non-coplanar might be R, V, and T would be non-coplanar. Because those are three points that lie in different planes. Okay? Or maybe we'd have like RP is not coplanar with line ST. So that kind of thing. Another important and new vocabulary for you is foot. This whole concept of a foot of a line. Well, the foot of the line is the point of intersection of a line and a plane. So that point where the line hits the plane and runs into the plane, hits it, that is considered the foot of the line. So come to class tomorrow, tell me what the foot of line RV is. We're going to move on to four ways to determine a plane and I will demonstrate those for you. So let's take a look at the four different ways to determine a plane. As you can see on your notes, three non-collinear points will determine a plane. So if we imagine our three cups here, the tops of those each being its own point, well, we could take those three points and set our plane on there, and those three points will determine a plane. Which is why I have the milking stool in the classroom, you might see that. And the milking stool is our example of three points that determine a plane. One of the reasons farmers used the three-legged stool, because when they went to milk the cows, the ground wasn't always level, but those three points would always find their own plane, no matter how uneven the ground was. So, three non-collinear points will determine a plane. As you know, any two points make a line. So, we can take two of our points and create a line, and then we have our other point here that's not on the line. And we can set our plane right on there. So those, that line and that point will determine the plane. And using the parallel postulate, we know the parallel postulate says if we have a line and a point not on the line, there's exactly one line through that point that's parallel to that given line. So I grab my second line here. 
I now have two parallel lines using the parallel postulate going through my third point. And those two lines are going to determine a plane. So I can make a plane or I can set a plane on my two parallel lines. Of course, back to any two points can determine a line. I can also take my line and run it through one of the other points. So now I'm using all three points, but now my lines intersect instead, and two intersecting lines determine a plane. If you look at maybe one of your tables at home, a kitchen table or something, you might have two intersecting lines and that tabletop is sitting right on top of those. That's because two intersecting lines determine a plane. Now we have a couple of postulates concerning lines and planes. One of the postulates says that if a line intersects a plane not containing it, then the intersection is exactly one point. So if we imagine our tabletop here to be part of a plane, my yardstick is a line. When that line comes through and intersects that plane, the intersection is going to be exactly one point. So we can only intersect, the line can only intersect the plane at one point, and then it will proceed through the plane. And of course, that point where the line intersects the plane is called the foot. That's the foot of the line. And then finally, if two planes intersect, their intersection is exactly one line. Keep in mind that planes extend infinitely in all directions or in both directions, length and width, forever and ever. Okay? So now we have two of these that intersect. Well, when they intersect, they come together, <coughs> their intersection is going to be a line. So when my tabletop intersects my wood piece here, that extend infinitely, the intersection is just going to be a line. So there's our introduction to lines and planes and three-dimensional figures, and we'll work more on these when I see you in class.